Oh yeah. I think catfish was that much fun in the snow. Using my raincoat for sled. <laughs> Let's go fishing. All right. Welcome to Two Passions Fishing. I'm Jamie. We're gonna try something new. I have, I got a cold, so I'm fussing with that. So my voice might sound funny. But anyway, dark water premium baits. I got this at the Catfish Conference in Louisville, Kentucky for this year, 22. And we're gonna give them a try. It's $9 a bag, a little expensive, but I got the uh, garlic uh, blend. Let's throw these in the water and see what we can catch. Now I did bring my uh, channel cat fishing poles. Um, I'm sure they'll handle cat, uh, flatheads, but they're smaller, smaller equipment. It's not real big equipment, but I've caught flatheads on these poles before, so. See, we get these out there and see what we can catch. So, get these poles organized and separated. Now, without a whole lot of current, there's a new area. I've not fished this part of all glaze. So, we're going to give this a try and maybe you'll find this might be a honey hole. So, maybe you'll find uh, a good spot here. Now, the water's down, so an opportunity to fish the bank since the majority of my time is bank fishing. So let's get hooked up. I only got an hour or so to fish. Let's call it the cooler there. Might actually be, it might be a good idea. Oh, they might stay together, we'll see. I'm actually using a bigger, little bigger chunk than what I wanted to. It's not a real big chunk, but as you can see with my thumb, it's somewhat a good sized chunk, but I don't have my sense of smell back, but I can smell that. It's pretty strong. Let's get it out there. One of these is smaller chunk of that, but it wasn't standing on the hook. I need a little bigger, bigger chunk. I didn't get that too far out. I was actually afraid that it's gonna fall off my hook. Let's, let's get another one out there. Maybe it's a different one. I got a different variety of rods here, so when it comes to channel cat fishing, I got different rods. Now this has got a roll weight on it. Down here had a no roll weight. It's got some good scent on it. I mean catching fish it's expensive but if it's catching fish I'm gonna go ahead and keep ordering good bait I'm not really a big fan of using processed baits as much as I am when it comes to uh, using uh, fresh bait I like using fresh bait okay I think that'll stay on really good no sense wasting that piece we'll just Hook that piece right on there. Make sure the hook's exposed. It should look just like that. That looked pretty good. We'll get that one out there. All right. See what happens with a variety of rods here. Let's see what happens. Bait's really strong. It's got a real strong sense of, real strong smell to it. Put that back in the bag, it's a piece of using right now. Close it off. See, make it go with it. See what happens. I mean, if I was a catfish, I'd eat it. It seems pretty fresh too. It don't seem like it'd be rotty and and uh, moldy. It just seems it's really it's packed fresh. You can tell that. And they said this bait, if you seal it, it'll keep the same texture and same smell for for weeks. 
after using it. So, like I said, if it works out, I'm gonna continue to order it and use it. And uh, I mean, like I said, it's nine dollars a bag, so cut piece of little chunks off of it, it can go a long way. When it comes to bank fishing here now, I can, as you can see, I'll move you around a little bit. You go straight down that way, I can actually, if I want to, I can move around, you know, if I'm not going to, I'm not going to end up getting any hits here on that bait, maybe 20 minutes, half hour, I can move on, but I'm a little limited on time here, so. I'm gonna have to deal with this spot right here. And I can actually walk this all the way up to the bridge. Water's down, so um, it's a great, great time for a bank fisherman to get out on the river. The water's down like this. Come on, catfish. Let's get a big one. Sorry for my head here, and I gotta find the spot that I had. Go. Oh, we're getting a bite already. Check this out. That was quick. We're getting a bite already. Well, that didn't take long at all. <laughs> Good spot. Hopefully, hopefully it's not a turtle. The water is starting to warm up. I mean, we're, we just had a good snowstorm not too long ago, and, and a lot of cold fronts came in. So we're now just getting these 50, 60 degree water temperatures. Now, if that one stops biting, and this one here gets hit, a pull to the right, I know for sure that, that bait's probably gone. Channel catfish are just notorious taking your bait off your hook. Oh, there's a good hit there. Good hit there. It may be on, though. Let's see. When it comes to the channel catfishing, yeah. It may be on here. No? Well, I tell you, I don't really. It's only a few minutes being out here. You got a bite already. That's pretty cool. Now it's hitting just biting on this side. Both poles are running here. Both poles are running. I'm liking that thing. <laughs> when it comes to channel cat fishing, they usually do this. They just Holes just bounce, and they may bend a little bit, bounce, bend a little bit. But when you have a flathead on 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 your, on your pole, it just bends real slow and gradually bends. Most of the time, it just stays there. Channel catfish just basically just bounce it up and down. I'm actually pretty excited about that. It didn't take long at all. I'm almost thinking, uh, that, yeah, I mean, I spent nine dollars for this, this bag of a bait, but my chances, you know, fishing here with just raw chicken, uh, fresh chicken, would just be the same uh, success. Let's 
Except feet anyway, I don't think I'll, I mean I have my boot on if I kick it off. Look at that. If I had smaller bait on there, I'd probably melt. Oh, that's a pretty good hitch there. Yeah, that's a pretty good hitch there. I might actually have him. This one out. Man, that bait is pretty tough. I'm gonna take a little bit off of that. That's it. That bait is just a little too big. I'll take a little bit off of that. Now I took my chances up just a little higher and add that catch. Right out of my hand. That was pretty fun. I had chicken. <laughs> I had chick. I had my chicken, but fish grease on my hands, and I went to swing. It flew right out of my hand. I guess I'll keep that on the video. <laughs> Happens to all of us. This piece is just a little bigger than the other piece. So. Yeah, this is something I found out when the water is cold during the winter time. Uh, these smaller baits. That's even for big blue catfish, flatheads. Flatheads normally are not too active during the winter time. At least in my parts here in Ohio, Indiana, Northwest. But these smaller baits during the winter, it's just, it seems I think they're a main way of saving their energy. And it takes a little more energy to consume that size of bait. I'm not sure. It's kind of odd. I mean, because there, there are times I'll throw big baits out there, the very same place I'm fishing, no hits. I mean, it might be little nibbles. That's it. But as soon as I cut that bait down to a real small size and throw it out, I'm getting them. They're hitting them. So, kind of odd. Let's get a bite here. Yeah, that's a little bigger than the other one. That's Robin singing right on top of me. You know, spring's near when you got Robin singing. And some of you don't know is that when you when birds sing like this, that they're actually singing their territory area where they're nesting. It's pretty cool. It's like they're claiming their area. So 
I don't know where this bird is singing. If I find him, pretty much where he's gonna, where she's gonna be nesting. Robins are pretty cool. Right? Both the male and the female both help each other take care of the eggs and build the nest. Really interesting. I'm liking this bait. Well, I'm praying I get my sense of smell back. <clears throat> that COVID I had last you know, last year in September really nailed me hard. I mean, I actually thought I was going to be a goner. That's how bad it was. It was bad. It laid me up for several, at least three weeks. And I haven't got my sense of smell back, but I can smell just a little bit, a tad little bit. Like I said, this fish had been pretty strong for me to actually smell it. thing out without losing the pole. Not bad, you've been here till what, 15 minutes now? Not bad at all. <clears throat> I put a decent bet on that pole. That's a uh, medium heavy, heavy pole. I put a decent bet on that. This one here, I could probably get a bluegill on it. Good size bluegill on it, it's gonna bend really good, so. If I get a decent sized channel cat on there, it's going to bend really good, so. I think it's going to look like I got a giant on it. It's a pretty flexible pole. Even though it's pretty cool to watch that bend, though. I do have 20 pound mono on that one there, uh, big game. And this here I have, uh, I think it's 30 pound. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it is 30 pound mono big game as well it's the clear line oh here we go again here we go again it's the same fish i hope It's funny to see your poles getting hit like that. See your poles bending back. We'll get this fish. I like to put more uh, poles out there. Ohio's only a two pole limit. Thank <laughs> you. 
I said, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put a really small piece on there, the size of a quarter. Let's see what this guy here is. I'm thinking they're probably not that big. They're not real big fish. Put a little piece on there, like that. Just itty bitty piece. That's a seven out hook I'm using. Bust that. slack out there. Keep your lines tight to help your hook set. Mm. I'm fighting this nasty cold. Picked it up a couple days ago. I mean, I'm fishing. You gotta do some fishing on it. it. Five spans parked is right over there. About a quarter of a mile. The gas station over there. That's about it. About it. I'm not sure if that restaurant's even open anymore. It's called Cabbage Patch. I'm not sure it's even open anymore. for this fishing season. I'm ready to explore new areas and check out new places. Here we go. Those are definitely channel catfish bites. Hold the Hutzes as channel catfish. sound in the video. <laughs> That's okay. I love the sound of Robin. Give the glory and praise to God. Small fish killing it. I just heard something come out of that hole. I'm not sure what it is. And yeah, there's a big hole right there and I just heard something come out of it. Could be coyote, fox. What are you buddy? 
come out of there. Bass Pro Shop rods on here. Those are the big broomstick ones. I normally use for uh, flatheads. Pretty good. They want to catch more fish on them. I have to say, I didn't think of it at first. That bait does stay on the hook really good. And as I was cutting it, it was actually starting to get flaky, but a good amount of it stayed on the hook. It stayed on the hook really good. So I'm surprised. Because it's just the flay. I don't see it. It don't have no backbone or anything. It don't have any bones. As far as I, well, it doesn't have any bones because I can cut right through it. Don't have no backbone or anything, so that's why I was really surprised that stuff didn't stay together like, like it did on the hook. But it stays on the hook really well. fishing because it's relaxing it's laid back you know if you end up fishing with somebody I can inter interact with them talk to them you know like I'm talking to you it's just and it's, it's uh, time for I can actually read a book my choice which normally is my Bible um, it's just a great time to really sit back and, and just, just watch your poles bend it's just it's, a, it's an awesome feeling also awesome just watching it and again, it's just relaxing, but you know, you got bass fishermen, you got pan fishermen that fling lures out, you know, like every, every time, every moment chance they got, you don't really have that chance, but you can still, you know, interact with people, but you're always doing, you're always moving and doing something. So with catfishing, you're just more laid back. And I think that's reason, one reason why I choose catfishing, because lay back and sit down and read my Bible. Just opportunity just to talk to God and pray. And there's too many opportunities. That's all I can say about that for catfish. So I really enjoy um, catfish.
that's a good bed there. That's a good bed there. You might have him. You might have him. Not real big. You got one. It's coming in fast. There you go. There you go. There you go. Finally got you. <laughs> They're not real big. But I tell you those those are eater sizes there. Those are eater sizes. Catfish, put that off. Not bad. <laughs> Pretty catfish. All right. Put him back in the water. Let's get this one back out. <clears throat> I'm definitely liking this stuff. Oh, yeah. Let's expose that hook really good and off we go. I knew they weren't that big. They're just little ones. Those little ones have a great, every choice taking bait off your hook. They're good at it. They're kicking at them. Oh, they just pick, 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 pick. So if you use a big chunk of bait and you're out there flathead fishing, and you see your pole just doing this, well, like you get a chunk at fish like the one I caught earlier, kicking at that bait. They'll pick it, they'll pick it right off the bone. <clears throat> so ain't nothing left on your on your on your, ain't bait left on your hook. I'm not sure if I'm in a good area for flatheads though. I know there's channel catfish all through here. I'm gonna try to save some of that bait for flathead fishing so I'm not gonna I don't want to use all up that good bait for for channel catfish because channel catfish you can pretty much catch them on night crawlers uh, raw chicken you don't have to use really nice good baits for channel catfish shrimp shrimp is a little expensive uh, depends on where you're at Lake Erie Sandusky Bay in those areas I've used uh, chicken livers and uh, chicken even I tell you, I didn't have much success there at the uh, in Old Lake Erie. I mean, it had some nibbles, had a few, maybe had a few fish. As soon as I used shrimp, I mean, yeah, it was nothing but nothing but fish. I mean, I was bringing fish in. So it depends on where you're at. But like I said, when you, when it comes to channel cat fishing, 
don't use expensive baits. Um, channel cat fish, pretty much, surround the whole river. I mean, you can pretty much get them anywhere in the river. Um, when there's water, if there's a river, creek, there's channel cat fish, more likely. Uh, flatheads, flatheads are a little different. You gotta find them, you gotta research them out. They are, uh, they like deep holes, structure, and seem to be more territorial when it comes to being that kind of a catfish. That's what makes it a little more interesting when you catch them. Because when you have flathead er areas, you usually those are the places you mark. And pretty much call them your honey holes when it comes to flatheads. You find those areas. But usually they'll stay pretty much in that area, that general area. And channel catfish are fun to catch. Like I, I love catching any kind of catfish. It's blue, flathead, channel. Now the channel catfish in Sandusky Bay, if you want some big channel catfish, go to Lake Erie. Um, Port Clinton, Ohio, Sandusky Bay, those areas, there's some big channel catfish in there. I mean, anywhere from 10, um, 20 pounds. I mean, the best, my personal best channel catfish was uh, almost 20 pounds. And that's a big channel cat, that's a big channel catfish. And they can get bigger. They get a lot bigger than that. I'm gonna get a bite in there. Right pole. Yeah. When it comes to channel catfish, I use all kinds of rods. You know, catfishing poles. Usually the Walmart brands and uh, cheaper models. I would get really expensive with them. But I, I'm stepping up the game when it comes to flathead rods. Um, you'll see those being used uh, on my YouTube channel. Catfish Conference, I bought uh, uh, catfish, the Muddy River Catfishing Rods. I've always wanted a, a, a pair of those. I finally got me a couple of them, but now I'm gonna try to see if I can match up some bait, uh, bait casting reels for them. And so I'm kind of shopping around whether what kind of reels I want. So I made the Bass Pro, uh, Cat Max, maybe, maybe those type of reels, put on those rods. I'm looking at some Daiwa rods, catfishing rod, uh, reels to put on those rods. Yeah, I'm about to say Daiwa reels. Uh, there's another Sumo. I think it's Sumo uh, catfishing reels. I'm gonna look at it down. What's, uh, what's so cool about the Sumo catfishing reels? Or even the rods as well. Um, they're lifetime, so I'm really liking that. Being lifetime, so if something happens to them, um, I'm not sure how, I haven't really dug deep about how that lifetime works, but if I know you send it back and they replace it, I don't know if you have to pay a little fee or something, a little extra, you know, with that, but I thought that was a cool thing, having something lifetime, like that. even the rods, you know, after the break, they'll replace it and give you a new rod. So that's a pretty cool deal there. Oh, there we go, we got a black line here. I think we get sign with that black line. Might have a fish on that one. There we go. Yeah, that was a black line. Oh yeah, there we go. It's about the same size maybe. Yeah, same size. <laughs> Yeah, a little smaller. That's right, they're smaller shot catfish, but man, these are good eaters too. I take should take some of these home. Good deal. I'm glad I was catching some of these guys. Good old eaters. Well, he's right in the phone. I might get pliers for you, buddy. Uh, I always carry a pair of pliers, especially for catfish. Good pair of needle nose pliers. I tell you, when it gets in that bone, it's hard to it's hard to get that hook out. Oh, there we go. There's a little one. A little guy. I'll take a little picture here. <laughs> oh, good eaters there. Yeah, that water's pretty cold. 
I say that water's probably. I'm guessing maybe 40, maybe 45 degrees. Like I said, it's not real warm. And when the catfish, they get active around May in this area when they spawn. That's when they, that's when it's gonna be really fun. This. this is laying out of the bag. Whatever's in that hole behind you guys, that camera, is wanting out of there. Not sure what it is though. We got badgers around here. I don't think we do. <laughs> There's sightings of them. Pretty excited. Just a little mud here with a trap. Might give it away. Let's see what's getting out. That bait's not as fresh. That's been in the water a couple times. Back and forth. But paying that kind of money for bait, I might as well just use it. Tight. We find traps here. Mud soft, man. Stinky that is, but we can use it for bait. Get some pieces of dead shad. Found a piece of dead shad. <laughs> can use that for bait. Why not? I'll cut that up, put it on there. Idle for a while, might as well just reel it in, check it. Don't be shy about doing it. This fish ain't gonna go anywhere. Go anywhere. They'll still be in there. Again, see? You're wasting your time. Waste your time, bare hook. Good to just bring it in. If, you're, if it hadn't been hit for a while, I might as well bring it in. Because we're tail cat fishing, so these fish will bite like bluegill. I mean, they're, uh, I'm going to use this dead shad and see what happens. Cut him in half. We'll put him on there. It's bait. It's a little stinky. Good thing I can't smell it. Use it. There you go. Got the half his body section and his head on there. So get out to see what we can get with it. Might as well use it. Free bait. One thing I like about these bait clickers or uh, bait clickers, um, these bait casting reels. They'll get different. That's one thing nice about them. They'll get way out there. A lot farther than the spinning reels. So, if you want distance, get the bait casting reels. 
they give you good distance. It takes a little, little practice, you know, using them. We're getting the sunset over the river. That's pretty cool. It takes a little practice using them. Um, you're gonna bird nest it, you bird nest it a couple times, but I've been using it for several, several years now. But I've always used the spinning reels. I'm really liking the bait casting reels because of the distance. Especially if you're bank fisherman. Oh, that's actually hitting it. There's some hitting that shad already. Actually, I didn't think they would. Venus. It looked pretty old. It didn't have eyeballs in its socket. It was pretty old. But they do like shad. Shad, uh, shad is uh, probably the number one bait. I, I desire to use for um, flathead fishing. Go, look at that. It's a nice shell cat there, guys. That is a nice shell cat. I like that. Oh hi. Oh hi. You're gonna be released. Put your 
cooler. That's a beautiful channel cat. He's fat. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Catching bigger fish. <clears throat> All right. Boy, this is fun. Well, that's a decent sized channel cat there. That was a nice one. Let me get this out here. Get a piece on there. Press piece here. White gap hooks. White gap hooks are nice, but yeah, make sure that hook's exposed. Don't worry about hiding that hook. Just don't mind the hook. Go on this side. Switch. Hold. Somebody like. <laughs> mess out here. I'm using here is, uh, is the Berkeley Big Game rods, bait, uh, bait casting reels, combo um, with the rod. They're they're fairly cheap, fifty dollars. Uh, they're fun little rods. I mean, they're not real mechanically inclined, but they're perfect for uh, fun fish like channel cat fishing. Yeah, you catch flatheads with it and other fish with it but I assume they just use these cheaper rods for flat for gel cat fishing because I'm in the mud here and, and uh, it's not that expensive if you're beating on your, your equipment this bait comes off there you go alright let's pick this up Catch with this one. Keep that black one away and we'll just pop it. Big cast of these. 
Maybe hear some of these bait clickers go off, that'd be fun. This here is not a medium heavy, it's just a medium rod, so it's going to be a little sensitive on the end. Two, uh, two pole limit. Get that stick here. That's getting hit already. Alexia, big thing. <laughs> Seen some of the bait fly off. I like I put a real small chunk on it, so I'll have to throw some bait on there. It's getting hit. Like I said, if you're your pole, especially if you're out here fishing for channel catfish or any which anywhere, if your pole hasn't been hit for a half hour or 20 minutes, whatever, anywhere 20, I usually give a good half hour. Um, check your check your uh, bait. I would even check it sooner than that. To be honest with you. There you go. Check your bait because you probably don't have nothing on your hook. Uh oh, we got slack line, so we might have something here. Oh, he let go. You let go. You let go. I think you did. We got something here, I guess. Yeah. yeah, he's big enough to pull the clicker. That yeah, that last shot was a nice one. That was a nice shout out fish. Really glad I caught him. All about catfishing, I guess, you know, with all the mud. You gotta have mud when you're catfishing. Oh, left pole. There we go. Oh, yeah. There we go. It's a big hit. There we go. Yeah. It's not a bad fish. Oh, he let go. Shoot. Shoot. Can't do that. 
Now, he's a decent cow cow. That was a nice cow cow. Hey, you heard the sickle go off. <laughs> uh, I got bait on here a little bit. Let's see what that Get it back up. Again, we'll see. Got it right on the line where he went back. So. Put the clicker on that one. Come back on again. Let's see what happens. You're going to fly over there. There you go. He might come back. That clicker is a good indication, you can't see the line real well. It's a good indication when that line goes off, that clicker goes off, he's taking your bait. It's a good indication that you got a fish on. That's a good time to set the hook or just pull it back. As a channel catfish, I, I kind of like to set the hook. That was a decent channel cat fish. That was probably the same as the last one. That. That was both getting there. Oh, look at that. You know what? I'm going to take the shaker off. I might be losing here. Just a channel cat fish. Done. I got mud in the clicker. Not, not mud. It's going to make a nice noise in the camera. Fresh piece on it. I'll try to just piece up. Right on the middle. Let's put our piece on there. The channel catfish, make sure you get plenty of bait. You're gonna, you're gonna have some hit and miss. Get the clicker shut off in that one. It's got mud in it. And on the clicker, I can't push it out. Let's see how it's water. Wash it out. Well, you got that set? Now you can see as well, too, is there's not a whole lot of current on it. So, that being said, two ounces of weight for perfect. Keep it on the bottom. There's a lot of 
fun. A lot of fun. That's where I'm at to count, but I think we got four or five catfish now. Let's take a nice little mess of catfish hole. Well, it tastes good. Something I, I like to love the most, catfish. Fried catfish. Fresh bait on there, let's see what happens. Turn it off there. Not sure the flash is closed out there. Got it anyway. Mud out of that bait clicker. That's butt. I almost washed it out. They're, they're cheaper reels. Um, you're gonna have a little issues with them, but you just gotta really take care of them. I mean, you can't abuse these reels. They don't take a whole lot of abuse. But I had them for a couple years. They're fun. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, that's a good button for that. See that? They're fine, they're cheap. They're fun reels, so they're not they're not the high dollar popular reels that everybody's using. I bought them because the money is, is cheap. Um, I just want to see if the real one one real reason why I bought these cheaper bait castle reels because I want to see if they're really for me. And so I don't want to go spend a hundred, hundred and fifty dollars on a bait cast reel and find out later it's like ah, I don't want I don't want nothing to do with that. Big cast reel. But both of them gone. But yeah, I'm happy with big cast reels, so you gave me a step up to really consider bait cast reels because I want the distance since you know, I do a lot of bank fishing and it really gets uh, gets my bait out there. traffic is the road's right behind us. It's getting dark. Let me get a get one more fish and we'll call it quits. Get on there. There you go. There you go. There you go. We'll both be coming for that. Here might be on. Nope. Nope. Here we go. Here that full bent. Well, let's take that clicker off. Nope. 
What the no? Boy, boy, that's wild. I'd really like to see if I get that bird out there. See if I can get that bird out there. There we go. I think he got it. He should have done that earlier. <laughs> Boy, I'm gonna sneeze. That's cold, buddy. There you go. Got to put the thing back. Cold got me distracted. Yeah, what I got here. Oh, right, time to talk to the camera. It's a lot of fun when you bite like this. Now can I fish for fun to catch? Some of these rods they get from Walmart. I got this big hoss. We got mud all over it. It's a competitor. It's actually a pretty popular rod. Spinning reel. A lot of catfishmen use this. Um, comes with this rod. Uh, I think it's a. I don't have all my rods memorized. But it's a eight foot. Uh, line capacity is 1530 pounds. The weight half to three ounces. It's a medium, medium rod. It's a pretty decent catfish. I had this problem. So I had this probably about three years. It's going strong. Swim in the bank. Well, they're fat. They're fat. Fat little guys. There you go. Sandwich. Uh, you know what? Take the bait off and pull it. Get ready to call it quits here. It's getting dark. I got about an hour's drive home. 
drive. Got to work in the morning, it's a work week. Well, I know my battery's getting low on my camera, so I better do some talking here before that might blink off. Uh, I really, really appreciate you all watching, all your friends watching my uh, channel, and uh, hitting that like button, and subscribing to my channel. I appreciate all my subscribers. I really want to do something special for you all in the future, and to do some giveaways um, on my channel. But uh, really appreciate you all for watching. Remember, God loves you, and uh, mind him, and uh, keep, keep yourself close to him in his presence, uh, for he loves you very much. And God bless you all. This is Two Passions Fishing, Jamie Miller. And if you're a new viewer, hit that subscribe button. Support this channel. Um, this channel is to give uh, support back to you, and encourage you, and keep you in the light of Christ. Because there is hope in Jesus. You know, with the world falling, darkness all around us, and, and uh, all, this, all the discouragement around us, and there's all kinds of stuff going on in our world. But you know what? God is faithful. He's a promise keeper. Remember that? And his promises are for the believers, for you. And he wants to give you hope and future and purpose of life. So mind God and love him back. Because he loved, he loved you first on that cross. For God so loved the world that he gave. His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him shall perish, but have everlasting life. Thanks for watching.